welcome all uh, to the short video lecture series on chemical engineering thermodynamics 2 i am pr narain from the school of chemical and biotechnology shastra this is uh, the second lecture in the series of short videos that we are going to see on different concepts related to chemical engineering thermodynamics and in this uh, uh, lecture 2.1 the lecture 2 part 1 of the series we will see on fundamental property relationships in thermodynamics now we are fairly uh, convinced ourselves after seeing the lecture 1 uh, that we need to study about uh, the properties of system uh, and we need to see how the properties of the system can be represent in terms of its constituents because we saw uh, in the lecture one that uh, the solution as a whole the system as a whole behaves differently and if we need to uh, do efficient separation or reaction in terms of talking its feasibility or conversion then we also need to understand how the system can be related to its constituents and how the property of one particular component say for example uh, is affected or is dependent on its constituents and how it is different from the pure component property uh, this is especially true like say for example when we talk about separation if we want to separate like say styrene from a mixture of ethyl benzene and uh, like say hydrogen that would be different from separating styrene from a mixture of ethyl benzene benzene ethylene and then hydrogen so that means even if you want to separate a same component but depending upon the constituents of the system the property might change so this is what we have fairly identified as questions which we want to answer during this course of chemical engineering thermodynamics so this i have put in this uh, slide as the goal of this particular talk so we will continue further with this lecture 2.1 now let us assume that m uh, the variable m denotes a molar thermodynamic property now what i mean by molar here is the property is on specific mole so the property is on per mole basis so that is why we call it as a molar thermodynamic property now this m itself can be any of these thermodynamic properties now we are only uh, restricting ourselves to thermodynamic properties and we are not focusing here on the transport property so this could be volume uh, internal energy enthalpy gibbs free energy helmholtz free energy or let's say entropy so this variable m in this talk could represent any of these uh, thermodynamic properties and when i write like in this notation we will understand that it is to be a molar property so that means molar volume molar internal energy molar enthalpy molar gibbs energy and so and so forth so that means uh, when we say uh, molar so the unit also becomes on specific mole for example if we want to write the unit of h now we know the enthalpy unit is joules so molar enthalpy unit will become joules per mole whereas for volume we know that uh, the si unit of volume is like say meter cube but molar all these notations that are written here are in terms of molar specific quantity so they are uh, the value per unit mole of the system now these are all again system property or solution property so what i mean by solution or a system property is they don't represent the property of a particular constituent now if i say that h is a molar enthalpy of a solution it is for that system as a whole and it is not for any of those constituent parts so it is a system level property or a solution level property at a given condition now what i mean here by a given condition is is at the given pressure right given temperature of the system and obviously the composition because we know that uh, uh, or as we have exposed to in lecture one if the composition of the system varies 
there is a change in the property of the solution and there is also a change in the property of a component uh, with respect to its own pure component properties. So, when we say M, when we say H or U or G, it is the solution level property, <coughs> excuse me, or the system level property at a given conditions of pressure, temperature and composition. Now, how is this composition specified for a system? Now, typically we can represent in terms of concentration, so which is uh, moles per meter cube, but because we have already taken volume as one property, instead of uh, specifying in terms of uh, concentration, we specify this in terms of actual mole numbers like N1, N2 and so on and so forth. So, that means uh, uh, we actually tell the exact moles of each component that is present in the system. So, that means N1, N2, N3 represents the moles of uh, the component 1, component 2, component 3 and so on and so forth. So, that let me just show it. So, let us assume that we have a system. Uh, this system contains is the entire system is at one temperature and pressure. So, there remains already a thermal equilibrium and a mechanical equilibrium. Uh, the system might consist of uh, like say n number of components. So, the crosses are one component for example, let us say uh, the triangle denote another component that is present in the system and probably let us take the circles as three components. So, we have here uh, component three component system. So, we have component 1, component 2 and component 3. So, triangle is one component, this cross is an another component and the circle is an another component. Uh, the circle uh, is a third component in the system. Now, if uh, every this symbol suppose denote one mole, let's like say for example, for illustration, then that means if you count, let's say the circle, so this is 3 moles, whereas uh, the component, the second component is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this is 8 moles or of the second component is present and obviously of the first component is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is 5. So, that means in total there are 16 moles and those moles contains 3 moles of one component, 8 moles of a second component and 5 moles of the first component. So, when I say that I am measuring, let us say I have some, some ways of measuring uh, the enthalpy of the system, the molar enthalpy of the system. So, this molar enthalpy of the system is specified by the temperature. So, this is the temperature at which the system is there. Uh, by the uh, the pressure and the temperature sorry. So, the system is specified by the temperature at which it is there, by the pressure at which it is there and obviously the number of moles of N1, N2, N3. So, let us say for example, uh, this temperature is at like say 60 degrees and this is at one atmosphere. That means the value, the solution molar enthalpy is specified at one atmosphere. 60 degrees Celsius and like so for the first mole is 5 moles of N1, 8 moles of N2 and 3 moles of this. Only when all of these are fixed, right, are fixed, you can specify the uh, enthalpy, the molar enthalpy of the system. Now, suppose if you change even one of this uh, parameters, let us say for example, you are going to add let us say 2 more of the third component making this to 5 that means this goes to now 5 the value of H changes here. Okay. So, even if you keep everything else same just change the composition by changing only one of the component then also the value changes. So, this is the idea uh, we want to uh, explain in terms of what we say as molar thermodynamic property. It is a solution level property and it is uh, fixed by the conditions of uh, pressure, temperature and the composition. Now, let us say that we want to uh, find an expression uh, for this property. 
So, if you want to find an expression for this molar thermodynamic property, now we know that it is function of pressure, temperature and let us say N1, N2, N3 till let us say Nn. Uh, what is this capital N will denote? Then this capital N will denote uh, the number of total number of uh, species. So, in the example that we saw, there were like three species. So, that is why we wrote N1, N2, N3. So, here it is N1, N2, N3. But you can uh, write in generic for any number of uh, uh, you can write in generic for any number of components or any number of species. So, that is why we have written like this. So, that means in generic, this this is like that means for n i species where i will go from 1 to n, right. So, i will go from uh, 1 to n. Maybe I will just write it down so that it is clear. Uh, so, this uh, n i, n i denotes moles of uh, species i in the system. So, i is actually from 1 to n where n denotes the total number of species. Now, this is the molar property. Suppose if you want the total property of the system. Suppose uh, this is the property per mole. This is the property per mole. But what if I want the total property of the system? So, the total property of system uh, is uh, very simple then. The total property of the system, I write it as m to the superscript t is equal to n times m. That is it. n times m where n is the total number of moles. So, what is n? n is equal to sigma n i. So, which means which is equal to n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 and so on till plus n n. So, this n denotes the total number of moles, total number of moles in the uh, system, right. So, n is the total number of moles in the system. So, that means in this example, uh, let us say for example, 16 is actual equal to the total number of moles of the system. So, that is what we write the total property. So, if we know the expression for a molar property, we can write, uh, we can just multiply it with n to get the expression for the total property. Now, uh, let me start and be, give you an exercise before we make a short break. Let us assume that uh, the total property which is equal to n m uh, is given uh, is a function of, so this is a function of pressure, temperature, and the number of moles of each species till n n. Now, taking this as a clue, can you write an expression for the change in the total property? Right. So, I have uh, given a function for the total property of a system, total property of a solution. I am asking, I want to know how to write an expression for the change. I am not particular about what is the value of the m, value of the property as a whole, but I want to measure the change uh, in the property. So, is it possible that can you write uh, the value of a change in this property? So, I will, we will can take a short break uh, and resume after uh, as a part 2 of this lecture. But uh, in this break, I want you to write an expression for the change in the total property of the system taking this as a clue. So, thanks for watching this video and we will resume in lecture L2.2. Thank you.